Hey everybody, this is Beth Wilson, Pulaski County Horticulture Agent. We're going to talk about how do you keep yourself in berries all year long um, uh, at, in your home garden. It's not terribly hard to do, but you sort of have to know, um, maybe use different varieties um, to keep the harvest going. So let's just take a quick look here at what we got going on. All right, so what you can see here is the berry crop bloom sequence from earliest to latest. Okay, so service berry would be one of the earliest. And we're just talking about berries, okay? Um, not apples or, or peaches or anything like that. So um, our service berry is one of the, the first ones that come on. And then as we progress down here, um, in, in particular, as you get down to fall bearing, blackberries and raspberries, and uh, even up to gooseberries, you really don't have much of a chance of frost damage, but that's what it's all about is um, knowing when, when those frosts occur and, and what crops would be susceptible. So um, as you can see over here, this is a strawberry bloom that's gotten um, frozen out and frozen by uh, the frost. So it's dead, that, that, um, that flower right there will not produce a fruit. And occasionally we do have frost to occur on blueberries and it causes these frost rings right here, as you can see. Um, doesn't happen terribly often, but often enough. But after blueberries, we really don't have much of a chance of um, late frost to kill the, the flowers. And so let's just take a quick overview look of how you can keep yourself in berries through a uh, season in Kentucky. So. Um, the first thing, first fruit that we usually have are June bearing strawberries. So those are going to ripen up um, in May and into June, sometimes into the latter part of June. Um, ever bearing strawberries as well have kind of three distinct seasons, as you can see here. Um, they're not the best things in the world, but if you need a strawberry at, in July and August or in September, October, this is, you can do that. Service berry has a pretty short window. They're called um, June berries as well. So they're pretty much in June. Then we go down to black raspberries that come in in June. And unless you get a couple of different varieties, they really don't last very long, unfortunately. They're um, uh, coming in June and maybe three weeks and, and they're done. So uh, this, this arrow extending this way is probably uh, extended because of, due to variety selection. Then we have gooseberries that have a fairly short window as well. Blueberries can have a pretty long window of harvest. You have to use different varieties that are early, mid, and, and late season. Um, same thing with, with uh, sort of the same thing with blackberries, but you start out with um, the, the semi-erect, or I'm sorry, the erect. Uh, they'll bloom first and come in first, and then your semi-erects will go through the rest of the so August and September. And then we also have red raspberries that come in at the same time as some of these other things. You can see we have a lot of different crops going on here in June, July, um, so that's pretty normal. Um, but then we can round out the season uh, with these fall bearing uh, blackberries, primocane fruiting blackberries and raspberries. And they are, they are capable of having an early crop here, but the main thing is, is uh, they're blooming on new wood. So they come start coming in, uh, those start coming in in August and they will, you can harvest them right through frost. It's this, I, I've done this the, the last several years. I've had primocane fruiting blackberries and they are going strong up till frost. Um, so again, this line right here is frost. So that's, that's the end of our year. All right, so let's talk about the June bearing strawberry varieties. Uh, you, you would want uh, to, to keep Berries coming, you'd want a mix of early, mid-season, and late berries uh, or cultivars. So here we go, uh, the early ones. Early Glow is still rated as one of the best tasting, but it does, does come in early, and you'll have to provide some frost protection. Um, so, so Flavor Fest is a newer one. Um, it's a, pictured over here on the right bottom, and they are extremely good. Um, they kind of have a, a, a peach flavor to them. Um, not necessarily that you want peach flavored strawberry, but um, they're, they're, they're very good, just has a little different flavor. And then you go to mid-season, these Dar Select and All-Star, 
and then late season um, jewel in the AC Valley Future Sunset. And when you're looking at the disease resistance profile of, of these um, cultivars, it's always important to have some resistance. The R means resistant, um, the, the, the T means tolerant, and the S is susceptible. So a lot of these have pretty good resistance. You can see here a lot of R's, a few S's, but this is going to ensure that you don't have a whole lot of diseases going on and have to worry about that. <clears throat> The ever-bearing varieties, a lot of people call them day neutrals. There is a little bit difference in them. UK um, is my boss and they really don't recommend them. But for home gardeners, if, if you wanna um, play around with these, I think it's perfectly fine. They do tend to have three production peaks in the, and I showed you that in the, uh, the previous slide. So we have a spring and a midsummer and a fall crop. Um, here are the varieties you'll wanna take a look at. Um, Again, none of them are great, but um, again, give them a try, see if they work for you. Um, I have uh, personally had um, the San Andreas, excuse me, not Seascape, the San Andreas uh, around Thanksgiving. They tend to be kind of hard, um, but they are ripe and they are fairly tasty. So you can try any of those uh, varieties and uh, see what you think. And home strawberries can be grown in a variety of different ways. In a raised bed, you can use them as an edging or a ground cover, like so. Um, so they can certainly uh, fit into your home landscape. Um, these berry pots, I've never had much luck with it. Uh, to me, it's a watering nightmare. But anyway, um, you can try that. And of course, just let it go in the garden, just like this picture shows. Uh, these gutters or PVC pipe, um, I certainly would not invest the time and effort into to this kind of a growing system, um, but you'll see them. Um, I would rather put these things in a straw bale or a raised bed, to be quite honest. So I should put a big X through this, but a lot of people think this is fun and, and want to try it. All right, one slide on service berry. Service berry is a, a native tree. Um, it's an amelanchor. Um, these could be a one trunk or multi trunk tree. Um, they bloom, their bloom is very, very nice. Um, and in fact, they have been bred for ornamentals, uh, the ornamental market and Autumn, Autumn Brilliance is one of these hybrids they, they've done uh, and has this wonderful fall color. Um, but they do um, produce these nice berries in June. Um, and as you can see here, I picked my black raspberries and some service berry and they're coming in at the same time. Um, there's not a lot of information on what type of, or what cultivar of service berry to, to plant, um, but I did see some information from Cornell that has a, that had listed Shannon and Indian as the largest um, berry of the service berries. Um, and there's, uh, as far as taste goes, there's the Smoky and Pembina or Pembina. Um, and then just some older varieties, uh, one's called Success and Dwarf Mountain. I don't have any uh, direct experience with these. Uh, I don't even know if you can find them out there, but just, a, just a, a regular Allegheny, Shad Blow, or Downy service berry will produce these nice little berries. Black raspberries. I love black raspberries. I don't know about y'all, but it's one of my favorite fruits. Um, it basically comes in in June. Um, they grow from a crown. They don't have the suckers coming up like uh, some, some of our brambles. Uh, the plantings will last you a pretty good while, so make good selections to begin with. Um, again, you can kind of spread out that June harvest season by having early, early season, mid-season, and late season varieties. And um, so here's some, Bristol would be an early one, Jewel would be a mid-season, and then Mac Black would be a late season. Gooseberries are also a mid-June harvest, a fairly short window of opportunity here. Um, they are thorny, so don't, uh, don't go out with a good blouse on <laughs> uh, or you'll, you'll ruin it, which I've done many a time. But anyway, um, the, these, these uh, gooseberries, um, they, are, they can be yellow, um, green, or they can be pink. So uh, the Hinamaki reds, Invicta, Amish red and Pixwell are your <clears throat> varieties to choose from. 
there is one called friend which uh, I don't have any, there's no data on like how you know how well it yields but it is thornless so if you want to try that one out uh, you can do that let's talk a little bit about blueberries they tend to be a fairly uh, uh, popular plant to put out and um, we can stretch our harvest from June to August with uh, early mid and late uh, uh, season cultivars uh, these uh, plants when you plant them are going to outlive you so be sure that you make good good variety selections. Um, <clears throat> they really do like a raised bed that has, um, that you put a, an organic mulch on and you replenish that every year. So here's uh, some, uh, some recommendations for varieties for our early, middle and late season harvest. Um, Patriot is an early one. Here's your mid seasons. We, we are usually, um, uh, using um, um, northern highbush blueberries as our varieties, but Ozark blue is a southern highbush. Um, but these other, these are all fairly um, old varieties that we know work work well. Um, Elliot and Aurora will be the, the latest varieties that we have. They'll come in uh, in August. Um, we do have some. If you want to stick these plants in containers, there are a now that they've been breeding these to go in containers. So we have Friendship and Top Hat. And then Stark Brothers has a series of these bushland berry varieties that you may want to take a look at um, on their website. Now, before you plant a blueberry, we can grow blueberries wonderfully well in Kentucky, but they do have specific soil requirements. And if you do not get those specific pH requirements correct, you'll waste a lot of time on blueberries that will never do anything. So um, be sure if you're gonna, if you're interested in growing blueberries, you must, I would highly, highly recommend that you get a, a soil test and we can adjust that pH down to four and a half to five before you ever plant. It's very hard to adjust the pH once it's planted in the ground because we can't put as much sulfur down. And sulfur is what we're gonna use to decrease the pH. <clears throat> as, I as I said before, raised beds um, is the way to go with these. If you could incorporate peat into the, the, the planting row, that would be great. Um, we also incorporate peat into the planting hole at a 50% a soil, 50% peat ratio. Um, there's pollination concerns. You really want your uh, these little bell-shaped flowers here. Um, Bumble's bees do a really, really good job of pollinating these. They're probably better pollinators than honeybees, although honeybees um, are just have vastly more numbers than bumblebees. So either one will do a good job. We like to have at least two varieties to improve the fruit set on both varieties. Um, without just planting one variety, you will get some fruit, but you won't get near as many as if you have two varieties that will cross pollinate. Um, the picture on the lower left here shows a teeny tiny blueberry plant that this person allowed to fruit. Do not allow blueberries to fruit the first or second summer that they're in the ground. Strip off these, uh, it's, it's painful, I realize, but strip off these flowers when they come. There is uh, something that happens when you overstress a blueberry plant when it's this young by you know, having it put fruit on, it just will put that thing in a funk where it just never comes out of it. So uh, do yourself a favor, adjust your pH down to four and a half to five or five two, strip off these flowers for two years <clears throat> let it and allow it to fruit the third year, maybe half of them. Um, the other thing you'll have to worry about if you, if you grow blueberries is birds. They will come, they love blueberries. So you may have to set up a system uh, like this where you uh, net, put a net over top of your planting. And the picture over here on the right is just sulfur. That's what we use to adjust the pH downward. All right, let's switch to raspberries. We have uh, June bearing and we have fall bearing. Um, June bearing red um, are, are these varieties here. We do have purples as well, that one's called royalty. And then we have a lot of fall bearing raspberries. Um, um, and here are the, the um, 
the R's mean they're red and the, the Y down here means and is a, is a yellow um, color fruit. But um, sometimes you can get um, these June bears to, to, to um, bear over here in the fall. Sometimes it happens, not always. But these are, you know, if you like raspberries, there's no doubt these are some, some good varieties to try. And here's just some pictures of Autumn Bliss and Joan Jay, Joan Jay which is a thornless. All the other ones are thorny. Um, and here's Caroline. All right, we have blackberries as well. Uh, blackberries is more of a, uh, we, we know blackberries in Kentucky. Raspberries maybe not so much, but um, you'll want a variety of different types that will come in at different times. So your first harvest in late June will come from these erect blackberries. And here are four um, uh, varieties to choose from there, Natchez, Washita, Osage, and Ponca. And then we have semi-erect. Um, these come a little bit later, sometimes uh, early July. Triple Crown is, is still one of the better tasting ones and better producers. Um, these semi-erect, don't let the erect um, kind of fool you. Uh, Triple Crown will grow a massive amount of cane. So you wanna give this plenty of room and have a, a trellis system set up for both Triple Crown or Chester for that matter. Um, we also have Primacane Thorny and Primacane Thornless. The Primacanes, so, so the erect and semi-erects are coming in in, <clears throat> in June and uh, late and into July. But these Primacanes actually are, are uh, fruiting on current season's canes. So in the spring, as those canes emerge, they're going to get some age on them, and then they're going to actually set flowers and fruit on that cane. So that's what these do, the primacane thorny and the primacane thornless. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't really like to deal with the thorny ones because I usually run out after work and I've got decent clothes on. And so I rip them up. I like the primacane thornless myself. I have freedom at home. It's been a pretty good producer for me. Um, but Traveler has been shown to, to be a little bit better a little bit firmer um, and smaller than Freedom. And then the newer one is the Stark uh, Black Gem. It's not completely 100% thornless, uh, but it does have some thorns. <clears throat> so let's go back to erect and semi-erect. Um, we're not talking about primacanes. For the erect ones, <clears throat> we just need a, a little, not a really strong trellis, but just enough to kind of hold the canes up. Um, they, they will win or kill at negative 10. Um, the berries are very, very good. The seeds aren't as big as the, uh, or they're, I'm sorry, the seeds are bigger than just a regular thorny one, um, but they're not quite as productive as these semi-erect. And um, this SWD here means spotted wing, whoops, spotted wing drosophila. And that is a new pest that we have that pretty much gets into most of our summer fruits. So these are coming in and um, av avoiding most of the damage from spotted wing drosophila. The semi-erect on the other hand, we start from the bottom up, spotted wing drosophila loves these. They will get into them and we'll have, we'll talk about what, just what exactly these, uh, pest, this pest does. Um, Semi-Rex are the most productive, and we talked about triple crown. Um, the berries and seeds are larger than the erect or the um, kind of wild thorny ones. Uh, and you'll have to have a trellis for these because they can produce a massive amount of canes. And let's talk a little bit about the primacane thorny ones. Again, um, you, if you want to try these, that's fine. I, if I'm going to pick and um, do the, the work, though, I'm going to I'm going to choose the thornless ones. So a very light trellis is suggested again, just to kind of hold these um, these things up. Um, we don't really know all the hardiness yet. Um, it, does, it will produce two crops. It's a little confusing, but um, it will produce two crops, an early one and then a late one till frost. Um, Primark 45 was one of the best ones that came out um, it, for commercial growing and um, it doesn't have orange rust so far, which is a, a kind of a big deal, which is a kind of 
um, if, the, if the disease that gets in there, you have to just rub the plants out. And let's talk about the primocane thornless blackberry, the primark freedom, the primark traveler. Um, uh, again, just a, a light trellis, just to kind of keep the canes up. They will produce two crops again. Primark freedom was the first one that came out and um, it basically will produce from mid-June to frost. Mid-June and July will be that uh, one of these two crops and then they'll, it may take a break or it may not, then the, then the new, the uh, newly emerged canes that grew this year will then start to flower and fruit. Um, Primark Traveler came out a little, a little bit later. It, it has a, sm a smaller berry than Freedom, but much better shelf life than Freedom. So if you're considering that, um, Traveler may be a better choice. But I had Freedom personally and I, I like it pretty well. So there's Primark 45, which is the thorny one. Um, here's Primark Freedom that I have at home, um, which is thornless, and then here's the Traveler, which came out a little bit after the Freedom, a little bit smaller berries than Freedom, and then this new one, the Stark Black Gem, which has a few thorns. The berry size is, is holds it pretty well, though, um, so that may be one you want to try. Now, <clears throat> we do need to talk about Spotted Wing Drosophila because um, this pest loves our small fruits. And that's what we're talking about today is small fruit. So it came in in 2012. It's a little fruit fly, just like uh, you, you find on your bananas or your tomato and when you lay, uh, put something on your kitchen counter for a couple of days. The difference is, is that this, uh, <clears throat> this female, instead of laying her eggs on already rotted fruit or something that has a wound, she can saw through perfectly good fruit with this little ovipositor and deposit it in your fruit. And when those eggs hatch, she deposits the eggs in your fruit. When the eggs hatch, out comes these little maggots. And that's usually not acceptable to, um, to our, in our mind. We just don't, we just don't wanna see that. Uh, so <clears throat> let's talk a little bit more about them. So how do you know if they're in your fruit? Um, you, this is what happens when you leave um, a container of berries out that are infested with these um, for a couple of days. Um, it, it is nasty and you don't wanna see this. So how do you know if they're in there? Well, you take a, a quarter cup salt and, and four cups of water and you pour over some of the berries. And what'll happen is the little larvae will, will come out. It doesn't like the salt water and they'll, they'll flow here on top. So that way you know they're there. Um, it doesn't really change the flavor of the fruit um, they've made wine from, and jam from infested, um, SWD infested fruit. And it didn't appreciably change the, the flavor. I know it's gross to think about that you're, you know, you're uh, going to eat these things, but it's going to be, it's going to take a lot of pesticide sprays to keep them out. Or row covers. So how do we manage spotted wing drosophila? Well, we, number one, we keep the berries picked. We don't let them get overripe. We only keep them picked. We don't just leave them, let them hang. Any overripe or unused berries, we're gonna put them in a bag or freeze them. We are not gonna compost them. Um, that's just a little incubator for making more spotted wing drosophila. Um, but, we, but if you wanna do something more organic, um, instead of spraying uh, these insecticides below here, there's a product called Protec. Um, this is a very fine mesh that goes over your, your, your rows of berries, <laughs> and um, it's not cheap. I'll just tell you, it's not cheap. Yes, it can be reused. Um, I don't know how long it will last. However, I don't know how much UV light is going to affect it, but um, it's, it's not cheap. Um, Martin's Produce in Casey County, that, that's right down the road from us in Pulaski County, um, you'll have to see if he will cut you a link that's not 328 feet long, um, but, but that is one of the better prices you'll get for 330 feet of this protect. That's a lot of money. The insecticides we can use are malathion, which has a one day pre-harvest interval. When you're spraying berries with insecticides, whether it be or an organic insecticide or a, a conventional uh, insecticide, you have to be concerned about the pre-harvest interval because you need to pick these quite often. And if you use something that has a 
three to five day PHI, pre-harvest, that means if you spray it today, you have to wait three or five days before you can pick and that's unacceptable for most uh, berry crops. So we need something that has a very short PHI. Malathion is one of them that will work. Um, there's also Entrust or Spinosad and then there, the, some of the permethrins have uh, a very short PHI. And in general, this is a very hard thing to quantify, but in general, here are our yields for our berry crops. Um, one quart per foot of row for strawberries. I have no idea on service berries. Gooseberries, once they get mature, two and a half quarts per plant. Black raspberries, the same. Red raspberries, about the same. Blueberries, again, once they get mature, so year four and up, about six quarts per plant. Um, the erect thormus, uh, you know, a quart or so, quart and a half per plant, but the semi-erect, the, the, again, 14 quarts per plant, they just, they really out yield the, the erect thornless. And then the primocane thornless ones, you know, they're not putting off a lot of shoots. Um, they're only going to be about a, a one quart per plant. And if you're ready to go ahead and start buying your, um, these berry plants, I would encourage you to go to our Center for Crop Diversification. This is www.uky.edu slash ccd for crop, Center for Crop Diversification. If you go to MAPS, they now have a fruit and nut cultivar nursery source directory that brings up this map and these little um, flags here in different states are nurseries and when you click on them, it tells you what you can buy there. Um, but also this is in a publication that's right here. So when you go to that website, um, click on maps and then go down until you find the fruit and nut cultivar resource. If you have any more questions about what you've seen today, you're welcome to uh, email me. My name is Beth Wilson and that is my email address, beth.wilson at uky.edu. You can check me out on Facebook at Pulaski County Horticulture. Instagram, I'm KY Plants. Twitter, I'm Pork Agent Beth. And I also have a, a YouTube channel called Pulaski County Horticulture. Thanks so much for watching.